I want to take a second to blow all of your minds <laughs> with a little news. The healthcare system in the U.S. is broken. Yes, I know. Thank you. Recently, in health headlines, wearable tech, the Fitbits of the world, have been stealing all the headlines, which is why I'm so excited to be here today with these guys who are going to tell us about the future of diagnosis and where the real opportunities are in digital health. Healthcare institutions and, uh, you know, pharmaceutical companies and, in, and uh, payers are even more entrenched and um, much harder to get any type, type of disruption or change in behavior. So, um, you know, I think that because we're seeing some movement in one area of the market, um, that's exciting and people are picking up on it. Um, and for Neurotrack, it's very exciting because, you know, our technology, um, which is an a early diagnostic for Alzheimer's disease, um, will rely upon a person taking their own health into their own hands and, and um, taking our tests and getting a diagnosis early. Cellscope is doing diagnostic imaging on the smartphone platform. Uh, we're building a, a series of attachments for the camera to be able to do diagnosis from anywhere. It just so happens that we may have a demo. On the phone, we're running our app, and this enables the camera to get the right uh, exposure and illumination. And now uh, we position it How? real time. And I'm so, oh, I, I'm no, so sorry. That's gorgeous. So sorry, that's gorgeous. So you can see at the top there, that's the malleus, the hammer bone. That Is there anything in there? The sound. <laughs> there's, uh, Are you seeing all the way through? If there's a lot of inflammation yeah, or yeah. You know, there's the small little green creatures in there, right. and you realize that something's wrong. but. How are you guys helping us to understand the average consumer, right? Yeah, so, so initially the idea is that it's really based on, on telemedicine. It's transmitting the image from, from home, from the app, you know, anywhere to an, an expert, a clinician somewhere else who's able to interpret that image and pr provide you the diagnosis and prescription you may need. Is, is Apple's entry into this space good? Good for startups? It's a tremendously positive sign for all of us, for entrepreneurs and folks in the industry and those wanting to come into the industry. If you guys, as developers, technologists out there, were to see the status quo of the technology that they're using within the healthcare system, you would just be absolutely appalled. There's a huge arbitrage opportunity to bring in tools that people actually want to use, that delight the user, uh, that bring in all of the data available um, and just really push forward the innovation in healthcare. To better understand both health and in human disease, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about your work and, and how it's overturning what are some of the basic assumptions that we have about DNA. So for a long time, the rate limiting thing in science has been having enough data. And in the last few years, the situation has totally changed. There is way more data sitting around on computers in laboratories and in the medical system than anybody touches. And I'm embarrassed to say how much of it is just compiling and nobody's doing anything with it. What my lab focuses on is developing hardware, software, and most importantly, um, bioinformatics tools, statistical models for mining through this huge amount of data and trying to find the pieces of information that could go into the diagnostic tools that we were just talking about. And I also knew there was some big microbiome news recently too, which I'm wondering if you could touch on and, and also maybe explain it to the lay right. people in the audience. Right, like so myself, Rip's right. referring to the microbiome and that's the community of bacteria, viruses, and other microscopic organisms that we can't even see that live in, for example, Rip's ear that we just looked at. And a lot of it. Um, the really amazing thing about the world of bacteria is that our bodies are actually more bacterial than humans. So bacterial genes outnumber your human genes off of your DNA 100 to 1 in your body. So if you're trying to figure out why you're sick, why you're obese and your twin isn't, it's not going to be sitting in your DNA most likely. 100 to 1, the odds are that it's in the DNA of the microbes that are living in your body. And, and Katie, am I right that until recently we've been solely focused on, on human genes, right? And That's human right. cells to yeah, study Yeah, this is diseases. a major disruption in healthcare and in scientific research to suddenly realize that most of the cells in our body, most of the DNA is in our own. In a sense, it's coming from these bacteria and that we haven't been looking at them. And there have been huge breakthroughs just in the last few years, understanding about obesity, autoimmune diseases, a lot of really untreatable, untractable diseases. It turns out that we just weren't looking in the right place. And ear infections are actually a great example 
there was a patient here in San Francisco who had an ear infection that was intractable to all antibiotics, all antifungals. And for some reason, the guy decided to just try transferring earwax from his good ear into his bad ear, and he was cured. And it turns out that there were bacteria in the healthy ear that were missing from the sick ear, and so he just needed a transfer of bacteria. And so our goal is to try to develop these kind of probiotic treatments, and also in the short term diagnostics to try to figure out if you're sick or not.